Yes, you know what time it is. G banger time. Woof. Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom. It's Windows Pro time. Righto. Tell you there, champs. Now, if you're new around here, come on, sub up, join the Woo Train, hit that bell, ding a ling a dong, and give that like button a little caress if you don't mind there. Now, this is the one, right? This is the one. This is the gaming for the masses. The G banger. The Dell G5, affordable gaming. So when you come in at this price point, compromises will have to be made compared to, you know, like say for example, Alienware. You know, you're not gonna get the super premium materials, the best displays, the best of the best. The way I see it is Dell G5, good. Dell G7, better. Alienware, best. So it's good, better, best. And I think you get pretty much as good as gaming experiences, you know, even if you pay that expensive stuff, yeah. You get some nice touches here and there, but at the core of it, you're still gaming hard with this G5. Now this G5 comes with the 8750H, six core, 45 watt CPU, pretty much the backbone of all gaming laptops. This also comes with an RTX 2060 and a full version, not Max-Q. That's the only configuration I can see with the Dell G5 at the moment. With the G7, the max configuration I can see at the moment is RTX 2070, but at the moment, the difference between this Dell G5 and G7 is the G7 at the moment, you can get RTX 2070 and the G7 a little bit thinner and it has a pressed metal chassis. So it's a bit more premium, you know, good, better, best all the way up to the Alienware. What's strange about these units, both the G5 and G7 is you can only get single channel RAM. So you only get either eight or 16 gigabytes single channel RAM. They don't sell it in dual RAM configuration. I don't know if this is to separate the performance of these compared to the Alienware, but hey, you can put in the RAM yourself, put it in dual channel, which is exactly what I've done with this gaming review. It is in dual channel, 16 gigabytes of DDR4. Now, I think going forward, if that's what they're going to do, they're going to ship stuff in single channel. That's how I'm going to review it from now on. So if a laptop comes with single channel, I'll tell you it's single channel. But if that's how they're going to ship it to normal consumers, that's how it gets tested from now on. But this one is in dual channel, 60 hertz display. You can get 144 hertz display. Now this thing will smash anything 60 frames per second ultra settings. Even Witcher 3, I was pushing over 60 frames per second at ultra settings. Battlefield 5 with ray tracing on and medium settings over 60 frames per second. So if you want a 60 hertz monitor, you don't want the high refresh, you're going to be able to put those settings up, you know, pretty much max. 60 frames per second, pretty much any game. So of course I did test them at that high res, but all the gaming benchmarks you're gonna see at medium settings, 1080p, because you can get 144 hertz display. So we wanna get those frames up over 100 if we can. Now this 60 hertz full HD display is perfectly fine, especially at this price point. All right, you compare it to the premium models, no, it's not as good. It doesn't have the contrast and you know, the viewing angles aren't as good as those premium panels, but when you sit in front of it, you play it. It is a decent quality display. I don't have any issues, especially at this price point. But no, if you're gonna spend more, you will get a better display. Sound is pretty decent too, but of course it's a gaming laptop. It is pretty loud, 55 decibels. I can't tell the difference between 55 and 60 decibels. It's part of the course when it comes to sound, external heat, not an issue at all. And when you game, the CPU will run into the 90s if you don't undervolt it. If you undervolt it by 150 millivolts, it will stay mostly under 90 degrees. But stock out of the box, yeah, you can get up to 100 degrees even if you're doing RTX or, you know, playing Battlefield or stuff like that. Clocks, you know, 35 to 45 watts, 3.3 to 3.9. It didn't go under 3 gigahertz like I've seen on other stuff like Razer and stuff like that. So I'm happy about that. And there is a bit of power limit throttling because it does have 180 watt power supply. And that's sort of on the edge there. Probably could use 200 watt power supply, but it is power limited a little bit there, which again, most of these gaming laptops are. And the killer feature on this is it has Thunderbolt 3. So I've reviewed a few laptops recently with 
RTX graphics that are in the more premium segment and they don't have Thunderbolt 3. So this has Thunderbolt 3. So thumbs up for that. And of course it has the HDMI and USBs and all that sort of stuff too, which I'll cover in my full review. So anyway, let's get to the gaming benchmarks. 1080p, all medium settings to try and get those frames right up there. So Apex, it was getting 131 frames per second. Battlefield 5, 98 frames per second. If you play Battlefield 5 with RTX at medium settings, you will get still over 65 frames per second. Pretty decent there. GTA 5, 121 frames per second. PUBG, I was getting 120 frames per second at medium. And even at ultra, I was actually nearly getting 85 frames per second. Witcher 3, 60 frames per second at ultra and 68 frames per second at medium so even witcher right ultra getting over 60 frames per second overwatch i'll put on epic and still 130 frames per second so this rtx 2060 really boogies yeah those temperatures get up there but despite that we're still getting great performance out of this there's no real issues with massive throttling where the frames go up and down it's very linear and very consistent so very happy with it so you can save money and you don't really have to spend you know those premium prices on the premium stuff you can get it excellent gaming performance out of this g5 i highly recommend it and this one actually comes with a 90 watt hour battery you can have an m.2 ssd in there and you can also have a two and a half inch drive like a hard drive if you have the small battery but the one i have doesn't have the hard drive it has the big 90 watt hour battery and i'm getting some good battery life out of this which i will cover in the review so make sure you subscribe for that review i'd like to really thank you champs for watching and i'll catch you in the next one Tally Ho.